So first of all, it's really important that we identify the nature of our own experience for ourselves and to see what we can actually say about our own experience for ourselves. And um, to identify the the sky-like openness of mind, just stop describing for a moment, stop thinking. And when you pause your describing or your thinking just for a moment, what remains? You can just do it again, just stop describing everything and relax completely. Recognize that there is an intelligence that is naturally present. There's something that's looking through your eyes, hearing through your ears, experiencing everything you're experiencing. And every time that you identify that intelligence, simply by allowing everything to be as it is, which is what you do when you stop describing it, you're aligning yourself with reality, with the nature of reality. Because the nature of reality is completely wide open. It doesn't have any edge or limits or boundaries. It's just completely wide open, complete perceptual openness in all experience. And then what can we say about what um, we could call the content of our mind? Or in the balance view training, it's what we refer to as data. Um, so anything you can experience, thought, emotion, sensation, anything you can perceive, um, what can we say about that? Not, not what other people have told us about it, but what can we say about it based on looking at our own experience? Well, when I began to look at my own experience, um, I began to see that everything I experienced appeared, first of all, spontaneously. So what that means is that I couldn't predict what I was going to think, feel, sense or experience. I can't predict what thought is just going to pop into my mind stream in the next moment or um, I can't predict what I'm going to experience throughout the day. I might have ideas about that, but the reality is actually never exactly like any of the ideas that I have. So I can't predict what I'm going to experience or think or feel. So it's spontaneous. It just appears. And I experience it vividly. I mean, you can look at your own experience now. You know, we're really experiencing this vast openness, inclusive of everything that's going on for you, no matter how you label it. Everything you can see, hear, sense, feel, smell, everything you're feeling. So it's this vast expanse and it's completely wide open. And I know it's completely wide open because it's continually changing. Now that's the next thing that I noticed, was that it was continually changing. It wasn't like a static experience. I couldn't freeze my experience or hold a particular thought or emotion in place. They were always changing. So you can look at your own experience now and see whether that's the case for you or not. Where was that thought that you had just a moment ago? What was that thought you had just a moment ago? It's already gone. And so it appears spontaneously. Um, I experience it vividly, but then if it's always changing without me needing to do anything, then I can see that it spontaneously self-releases. Without me needing to make any effort or any... Um, to put any focus into that, by relaxing and allowing everything to be as it is, I align with this spontaneously appearing, self-releasing nature of reality. I give up the struggle with trying to force reality to look in any particular way, and I relax and I allow myself to be exactly as I am. And the first time that I did that, just for a short moment, there was an incredible sense of relief. I could just be me exactly as I am. I don't need to change what I'm thinking, feeling or sensing. I don't need to worry about what I'm thinking, feeling or sensing. Just for one short moment I can allow it to be exactly as it is. And the key to doing that is this short moment of just stopping the descriptions. Just relaxing completely. Resting in this great openness of mind. This open intelligence that is looking through your eyes. The same open intelligence that you identified when you stopped describing. It hasn't gone anywhere, it never goes anywhere. All that happens in this training and through this practice of short moments repeated many times is that we gain confidence that there is something about us that is completely dependable. Something about us that never goes anywhere. Something about us 
that is absolutely reliable and is always the basis of whatever we're experiencing. This is open intelligence. This is what's looking through your eyes right now. Now, to understand the relationship between data, so that's all of the content, anything that you can experience or perceive, and the open intelligence within which it's occurring, it's very helpful to have um, metaphors, because to try and understand it purely intellectually can be, um, for me, certainly was quite a struggle. And so to relax and allow this instinctive recognition that is fueled by these powerful metaphors, like um, all experience, i.e. all data, is like a rainbow appearing within the sky, the vast expanse of sky. Or all experience is like the reflections appearing in a crystal ball. It doesn't matter what reflections appear within the crystal ball, the crystal ball reflects all reflections equally and evenly, without bias. It doesn't mind what's reflected in it. But whatever is reflected within the crystal ball the original purity and openness of the crystal ball remains completely unaffected. It never changes. It's completely dependable, completely reliable. Now this is the same relationship between our open intelligence and all of the data that stream in it. We've been trained to focus in on the data, so to describe what's going on for us. You know, when a thought or a feeling comes up, um, Oh, intimate relating. Oh, such a perfect example. Um, when I base my... I mean, it's any relating, actually. It's just in, in, in an intimate relationship, um, we basically have nowhere to run from our thoughts and feelings about the person that we're with. We're really intimate with them, but actually what we're doing is becoming intimate with our own thoughts, emotions and feelings. That's the real intimacy. And when we're in that kind of relationship with someone, the intensity with which we experience everything um, is probably unlike any other relationship. But the actual mechanism of the way that we relate is exactly the same as with all, all other relating. Um, and there's this basic mechanism that when we relate based on the emphasis, on the focus, on our thoughts, emotions and sensations, then um, relating becomes really challenging because the thoughts and the emotions and the sensations are always changing. We've just discovered that for ourselves. We can't hold anything in place and a good example is an in intimate relating and often um, when we meet someone for the first time and we have that falling in love feeling, you know, it just feels amazing, doesn't it? That, you know, when you fall in love with someone, it's just the best feeling in the world. Um, but my experience was at some point, that feeling, no matter how hard I tried to keep it in place, it disappeared. No matter how much I've been in love with someone and known that this person was the one, at some point, that certainty wasn't there anymore. And actually, the person that was the one became the one that was quite annoying and irritating. <laughs> and um, this is a perfect example of the way that relating, based on the emphasis on data, has no stability within it. Because the data are always changing, if I base my relating on having positive data or thoughts and emotions about someone, and only being able to relate with openness when I have those positive thoughts and emotions. The problem is, when I don't have those positive thoughts and emotions about that person or the place or the thing, it's the same mechanism, then the relating becomes difficult and I have to change the nature of that relationship. I need to... Um, it, it's, it is so funny, it's, it's, it's the thought that um, if something changes in my life, then I'll be happy. And to do with intimate relating, it's, it's against the perfect example. You know, when you're not in an intimate relationship, you think, if only I had a partner, if only I had a partner, then I could sit and look at the sunset and it would be even more beautiful. 
you know, I could have my dinner and if I had someone to share it with, it would be even tastier. Or, and then we find the person and we have the positive data. And then at some point, the positive data isn't there. And we think, if only I could sit and look at the sunset on my own without this person sitting next to me, then it would be even more beautiful. Or I'd just like to eat my dinner in peace for once. You know, please give me a bit of space. And it's just this, it's like swinging from left to right, backwards and forwards. And whilst we're basing our relating, while emphasizing our data about that person, place or thing, then there is no stability because they're always changing. So here, what we learn is that there is another way of doing things. <laughs> We've identified the open intelligence that is the basis of all experience. The key point comes in the direct recognition of that in the encounter with our own data, with our own thoughts, emotions and feelings about another person or about ourselves. And in that recognition of recognizing that whatever we're thinking, feeling or sensing is simply the dynamic energy of open intelligence, the reflection in the crystal ball, the rainbow appearing within the vastness of space, then immediately there is a different perspective on the data, on our perceptions, on our feelings, on our experience. They have their correct context of reality, of complete perceptual openness, of that which never changes. And then we discover from this stable recognition, we can allow the data to be as they are. We can allow them to flow on by we know that they're changing all of the time and we can relax completely. And from that place of complete relaxation, resting in our power of great benefit, we're able to proceed in any relationship with a, with a completely open-hearted appreciation of whatever that person, place or thing is. Not thinking that our well-being, our positive data, depends on that particular person. We become grounded in our own stable reality, the nature of our mind. And then we can relate in a completely different way because we're not looking for anyone else to give us what we've discovered that we already have. And then we can relax and enjoy relating. We can enjoy whatever it is we enjoy. And the secret of this training and the beauty of this training is that it's all inclusive. So you can go and do whatever you enjoy doing, whatever places you want to visit or people you want to be with, and you can take open intelligence with you. And you can simply incorporate it into your everyday life through the practice of short moments and through listening to the media that's free to download on the website or from the media table at the back of the meeting. And you just incorporate this openness into your everyday life. This is the key point. It's not something that's separate from, from shopping. It's not something that's separate from your family. It's not something that's separate from filling in your tax returns. <laughs> you can rely on open intelligence there and discover this same perceptual openness, this same ease of being this same capacity to see naturally and effortlessly and spontaneously what will be of most benefit. And life becomes easy and you become capable of living the way that you've always known you could live. I'd always known this, I just didn't know how. And that's what the Balanced View training provides, is the how. How do I do this? How do I access this stability and this openness? How do I do that? How do I become more familiar and comfortable with that that recognition of who I really am in all circumstances.